Hi everyone, this lesson is on seven different findings we can see on the face in patients who have lung cancer. And we can even see these in patients who might not even know they have lung cancer yet. Before we talk about those findings we can see on the face, let's discuss what lung cancer is, some risk factors for getting it, and some of the more common symptoms of lung cancer. So lung cancer can be broken down into two main categories. One is known as small cell carcinoma, and the other one is non-small cell carcinoma, which has multiple types of cancer in this particular category. One of them is known as adenocarcinoma. Another one is squamous cell carcinoma. Another one is large cell carcinoma, and the other one is bronchial carcinoid tumor. Now, the risk factors for getting lung cancer include tobacco smoking, so this is a very important risk factor for getting lung cancer. Secondhand smoke is also another risk factor. We can see radon exposure. So radon exposure is, again, the most common cause of lung cancer in non-smokers. It usually takes many, many years of exposure. Radiation exposure can also be another risk factor. We can see environmental pollutants being a risk factor. Asbestos exposure. Asbestos exposure increases the risk of adenocarcinoma and also another cancer known as mesothelioma. And then a family history. If you have a family history of lung cancer, you're also more likely to have lung cancer yourself. So what are some of the more common symptoms of lung cancer? Some of these include a cough, hemoptysis or coughing up of blood, and constitutional symptoms including fatigue and weight loss. Now in this lesson we're going to talk about certain effects that the cancer can cause that can show up on the face. Some of these include issues due to the cancer itself, due to the mass, the cancer's mass, or it can be due to certain compounds that the cancer is releasing, certain chemicals or cytokines, which would lead to certain what we call paraneoplastic syndromes. We'll talk about this as we go through this lesson. So the first finding we can see on the face is actually due to a particular condition known as superior vena cava syndrome. So superior vena cava syndrome involves head swelling, increased head redness, and some other signs and symptoms we'll talk about here in a moment. And it's actually going to be due to mass effects from the lung cancer that compresses the superior vena cava. So the superior vena cava is going to be the top vein that drains into the right atrium of the heart. So we have the inferior vena cava and the superior vena cava meeting at the right atrium where they both dump the oxygenated blood into the heart. So how the cancer causes superior vena cava syndrome is because if there's a tumor or a mass from the lung cancer, it can push on or compress even slightly the superior vena cava causing a backup of blood upwards. Now, this can lead to a swelling of the head or increased head redness and some other symptoms we'll talk about here in a moment. So it's essentially impaired venous drainage from the head. Now, interestingly, we can see this becoming more worsened in the morning. So after a patient has been lying down all night, they can have a more swollen face. And as they go through the day, as they're upright, walking around, there's some of that fluid that gets cleared from the face. So we end up getting an improvement of that facial swelling through the day. So that's an important finding here. We get worsened facial swelling in the morning and improvement throughout the day. And some other findings we can see include dilated veins on the chest, especially the upper chest and the upper abdomen. This can also be another finding of superior vena cava syndrome. So again, it's all about a mass effect that is pushing on the superior vena cava. Another possible finding we can see on the face is Horner syndrome. So Horner syndrome is again due to mass effects from the lung cancer, but this time it's where the lung tumor is compressing what we call the sympathetic chain. So there's nerves that run through the chest and into the head, and if there is a cancerous mass, it can compress or push on nerves in the sympathetic chain. So there's nerve compression, there's a disruption of neural functioning. What we can then have is Horner syndrome, and Horner syndrome has particular signs and symptoms, including meiosis, which is a constricted pupil. So if you were to look at this image here, we can see that what it should be is this size pupil, but we instead we get a smaller sized pupil. So we get meiosis, that's what meiosis means. We can also get anhydrosis of the same half of the face where we get the constricted pupil. So anhydrosis actually means that there is reduced sweating. So in some cases, you may actually see sweating from one half of your face, but the other half of the face has less sweating or absent sweating. So that is anhydrosis. Again, it's going to occur on the same side as the constricted pupil. And we can also see ptosis. Ptosis is a drooping eyelid. So we can see a little bit in this image here, not as much, but we can see a bit. So we end up getting 
ketosis, constricted pupils, or meiosis, and anhydrosis, all, again, on the same side. So that is Horner syndrome, and that is due to a cancer's mass that is pressing on the sympathetic chain. Another facial finding we can see in lung cancer is facial flushing. So facial flushing can occur in bronchial carcinoid tumor. It's going to be persistent flushing, so it's going to be where your face is more reddened than usual, or it's going to be episodic where it comes and goes with no known triggers. Again, this is going to be new for the patient. In some cases, there may be other known causes, but with regards to lung cancer, it's going to be new for the patient. It's never happened to them before. And why this happens with bronchial carcinoid tumor is that the carcinoid tumors produce serotonin, which can cause vasodilation in the face. And serotonin can also have other effects as well, including effects on the gastrointestinal system leading to diarrhea. So we can see not only facial flushing, but we can also see diarrhea as well. So again, this is going to be in bronchial carcinoid tumor. Another facial finding is facial hyperpigmentation. So facial hyperpigmentation can occur in some types of lung cancer. And that particular type that it occurs in is small cell carcinoma. And the reason that facial hyperpigmentation can occur is because the cancer is releasing high levels of a particular hormone known as adrenocorticotropic hormone, or ACTH. And this ends up leading to a particular syndrome known as ectopic adrenocorticotropic hormone syndrome. So we end up getting facial hyperpigmentation. So we get an increase in the darkness of skin coloration on the face, and it can also occur on the upper chest, and we can also get facial edema. So we can get a little bit of facial swelling as well with this. So this is another potential finding on the face in lung cancer. Another facial finding that we can see in lung cancer is perineoplastic dermatomyositis. So this is going to occur in adenocarcinoma more specifically, and we're going to see certain signs and symptoms that can occur, including a heliotrope rash, which is what we see on this image in the left. So we end up getting this rash around the eyes. And we can also get the shawl sign, which is something that occurs on the neck. So it's a rash, reddened rash on the neck due to sun exposure. Another finding we can see on the face in some patients with lung cancer, although this can be more rare, is the finding trichomegaly. So trichomegaly is going to be long eyelashes. Now this is going to be more rare, as mentioned before. It can be perineoplastic related. So there could be some growth factors that are released by the cancer that end up causing some growth or excessive growth of eyelashes. But most of the time, this particular finding will be found in lung cancer patients after they've had treatment, so after they've had chemotherapy treatments. So this is a possible finding we can see on the face in some cancer patients even before treatment, but again, it's more rare. And then finally, we can also see lip cyanosis in some patients who have lung cancer. So lip cyanosis is going to be a blue discoloration of the lips. It's going to be due to reduced oxygenation, and it occurs in more advanced stages of lung cancer. So advanced lung cancer, this is where we're going to see more lip cyanosis because it's where the lungs have become so bad now that there's significant reduced oxygenation. And the lips are going to be actually one of the first areas to manifest cyanotic changes. And the reason that we can see lips as being one of the first places to manifest cyanotic changes is because of the thin skin of the lips and also a superficial blood supply. So we can see the changes to blood oxygenation more early on the lips than other parts of the body. So those are seven of the findings we can see on the face in patients who have lung cancer. Again, a lot of these are going to be rare, but some of them are more common than others. Please check out my other lesson on lung cancer for more information on other skin findings how it's diagnosed and treated. If you haven't already, please like and subscribe for more lessons like this one. Please consider joining as member for members only content. Thanks so much for watching and hope to see you again soon.